So, back in 2019, Lana Del Rey released Norman fucking Rockwell. Uh, and as always happens when an artist changes their sound, it was a somewhat divisive album that was pretty well received by fans of the singer-songwriter genre, but a little bit less so by fans who appreciated Lana for her pop-infused, dark cabaret kind of touched sound. Since then, I've been curious to see what Lana would do next. Like, was Norman Rockwell just a one-time foray into the lands of singer-songwriterdom? Or, you know, was it a real change of brand for Lana? And uh, luckily, there's no need to wonder anymore because Chemtrails Over the Country Club certainly answers that question. Gone are the days of powerhouse pop anthems from Lana where she was pegged alongside artists like Adele and Amy Winehouse. She seems to have elected for a new set of peers these days, and that is the folk-tinged singer-songwriter crowd. I managed to keep my ears plugged and my eyes closed regarding this album until it came out on Friday, so I really didn't know what to expect going in. But uh, literally the second I looked at the track list on Spotify, I saw that the last track was a Joni Mitchell cover featuring both Zella Day and, crucially, Wise Blood. And honestly, I probably could have just stopped right there and reviewed the album just based off that. I don't feel a track-by-track -track breakdown is going to be particularly helpful on this one, because you should really just keep in mind it's meant to be a singer-songwriter kind of sound rather than a bunch of pop radio hits. It takes everything Lana did on Norman Rockwell and moves it a step further in the same direction. So as such, you'll probably feel the same way about Chemtrails Over the Country Club as you did about that album. But even in that context, these songs are still minimally designed. They rely very heavily on the subtleties of Lana's vocal performances, and I think this album is very much in line with what we've come to know her for in that regard. It's full of beautiful, layered vocals, um, on-the-nose lyrics, and there's a bit of a, you know, tongue-in-cheek attitude running through the whole thing. I took the last two tracks on Chemtrails to be a bit of a message to fans. On Dance Till We Die, Lana name drops Joni Mitchell, Joan Baez, and Stevie Nicks. And then, as I said, the last song is a Joni Mitchell cover, which features uh, Zella Day and Wiseblood. And I took this to be a pretty clear message about what musical heritage Lana is drawing from, and also who she considers to be her peers nowadays. One kind of cool thing about Lana's transition into this genre is that she's pretty much become the most popular artist in it overnight. And I think she's probably dragging along some fans with her who maybe don't listen to this genre very much. So I'm wondering if some of her popularity might rub off on artists like Wiseblood. Okie doke, summary time. Chemtrails Over the Country Club moves Lana even further away from her pop roots and places her pretty firmly in a folk and country-tinged singer-songwriter area. Now, I think fans who aren't really interested in this sound will just say that Lana isn't making good music anymore, but I'd say it's actually a pretty solid album. It's just targeting a different sound and a bit of a different audience. And that's it. I'm not a music critic. I'm just here to help you discover and appreciate music you wouldn't otherwise. However, discovery is a conversation. So tell me why you feel the way you do about this album, because that's the sort of discussion which helps expand people's perspectives. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you're interested in more concise videos which explain the appeal of many types of music, be sure to stick around. So that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.